Hello, welcome back to the Kingston Digi Book Club Facebook page. My name is Lou. I'm based in the Hook and Chessington Library branch and I love every second of being in this book club. For July's theme, we voted and we chose the theme of to read a book that had been on our to read pile for quite some time. So I thought brilliant. Category one ticked off of my adult reading challenge for 2020. I was like, right, achieving that. Also achieving the goal of finally getting around to reading this great book. Where did I buy it, you ask? <laughs> so I'm guilty. I absolutely love our book sales in the library branches. And you're thinking, hey, if you're a librarian and you've got loads of books to borrow, why would you like to buy a book? Because you can't beat the feeling of getting a new story to read and it's only 50p for a paperback and a pound for a hardback and my colleagues laugh at me because most of my wages go back into the library service because I just keep buying books. So there we go. So let me talk to you about this book. It is titled Gingerbread and by Robert Dinsdale. Robert Dinsdale grew up in North Yorkshire. He now resides in Essex and he says, and I quote, between uh, school runs with his daughter and being hunched over at a computer, he can be regularly found in his local library and he strongly supports that. So thank you, Robert, and I would encourage everyone to keenly support the Kingston Library Services as we reopen and to allow yourself to become lost in the gripping reads and new authors that are all available on the shelves. Um, the great thing about this book is it is available as a physical copy in our branches as well as a uh, spoken word CD. Uh, it's part of the London Consortium so you can reserve that in as well. Have a look on the My Library app to see what options are available for you because it's very exciting uh, to become lost in a physical book again. Gingerbread. I thought it might be a fairy tale rewriting of Hansel and Gretel. It is not. It is a book that is so much more and actually left me quite scared at some points. So let me tell you a little bit about it. There is a little boy who is the main character of the story and for the majority of the story we do not know his name. He is just called Boy. This is very key for you to remember as you become lost in the turning pages of this tale. We are greeted to quite a sad situation. Um, he is tr uh, driven late at night by his mother to his Papa's tenement, so is, it is his mother's father, the little boy's grandfather. Um, they don't really have a relationship, but there is a lot of urgency in the journey and in the new setup of them permanently living there because the boy's mother is very sadly dying of cancer. And you do hold on to the hope that she's going through such aggressive treatment that she will beat this, and the little boy is holding on to that hope too that each hospital visit will result in a new treatment, a new trial for her and a, a chance for her to get better. So this hangs over the story and the introduction to each character. Um, uh, the boy's papa is uh, layered it's quite hard to get a read on him and you do hear his jackboots. They are a sound that begin as a comforting, reassuring presence but then become more menacing as an echo as the, their lives and relationship progresses. Um, th what really kind of floored me uh, was a very emotional request by the boy's mother. So let me read it to you. Promise me you look at look to your papa. No matter what happens, no matter what stories he tells, 
no matter what you see or hear or no matter what you think, little one, promise me you'll love him and you'll care for him forever and always. Quite a big promise for a little lad to keep. He's trying to go to school, he's doing his very best and he's got a lot to contend with and I was like surely his papa is meant to be keeping this promise to look after the little boy not have someone so young be lumbered with such a deep responsibility and something quite there's something there like why must you not pay attention too deeply to the stories papa says what is the hidden meaning of them and there's a lot that's happened um in this whole country um, we're in belarus from the border with poland there's an ancient forest and um it, we touch on um war things that have happened politically in um ukraine and russia um and the little boy he does make this promise tearfully and when his mama does pass it's him who sways the grandfather you know we need to keep mama's request we need to scatter her ashes in the forest and papa will not go there he's cannot be swayed it it will damage him too deeply to return however he does go and they're wrapped up warm and they have several gingerbreads wrapped in protective, I guess, foil to sustain them on this journey out into the woods. So your heart's racing, you're like, wow, we're leaving the tenement, we're leaving the safety of the schoolhouse of Mr. Vitsky, and you know that as the little boy um, is driven further and further away, you hold your breath, because he's now in the sole care and charge of Papa, who tells these tales, who the school teacher has already kind of corrected for the little boy, like, these aren't tales of the Winter King and the Evil King at War, these actually happened. So you're wondering what the mind set is like of this grandfather. So they reach the forest and there's an old abandoned house, which comes to light is where his mama grew up and was born. And it always meant so much to her um, and that's why she wants to be scattered um, in the forest at a tree where her own mother was scattered uh, as ashes and it soaked up as a tree and they are at one with the forest again. So it's all very very deep and a lot of exposure to the little boy. The grandfather continues to tell stories of wars and how the trees, there will be good trees if you're kind to the trees and whisper good things, they will help you, they will shelter you, they will help you find food and there are bad trees who soaked up the bodies of murdered innocent civilians, victims of war and they are evil. It's very, very dark with each chapter. You have goosebumps and you're like, what vicious bloodshed and harsh reality is this young mind being exposed to he is too young he needs a warm bed he needs hot milk he needs comfort and routine and this is not happening i'm not going to give too much away about the story but the transformation of papa and the boy is extreme um they grow in the space of a year and live in the wild and the little boy you see him from being very naive and, and very sheltered and innocent and gullible to being very independent at one with the forest able to forage and survive and to hunt and the papas development in the forest 
I can't even find the words. At times I was absolutely terrified. So I'm going to read you how his tales, which he utters boldly and sometimes mutters deliriously, how they begin. So you can pay attention to these words and keep them in mind as you read the story. This isn't a tale, says Grandfather, but an opening. The tale comes tomorrow, after the meal, when we were filled with soft bread. And now, he whispers, we start our tale, long, long ago, when we did not exist, when perhaps our great-grandfathers were not in the world, in a land not so very far away, on the earth in front of the sky, on a plain place like on a weather, seven versts aside, come the war to end all wars. So this is how every story begins. And for quite a while, this is how the story ends. And so, ends the story of the babe in the woods. Is it true, marvels the boy? Oh, says the grandfather. I know it is true, for one was there who told me of it. This book is dark. It's like the Grimm's fairy tales. I've come to life in a modern age. You need to read it. It challenges every perception you have of what a grandfather and grandson relationship should be and what it really means to keep a promise. So I would definitely recommend you read this book. And I'm excited to discuss it more in the um, meeting this Thursday at 6.30 for the uh, Dizzy Book Club. And I hope that it will inspire you to read more of this author's works because I am definitely hooked. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your reading. Bye!